Hello, welcome to Your Senior Center. I'm Vicki Lowe, Director of the Foxborough Council on Aging and Human Services. And I am so pleased that we have Maureen Cardarelli, our public health nurse, back to do her Health Beat series. So today's segment will be about sun safety. So Maureen, welcome. And Thank can you, you tell us a little bit about why you decided this was an important subject to discuss other than it being the beginning of summer? Exactly, because there are, I'm going to quote, excuse me, there are about 400,000 cases of skin cancer in the U.S. per year. About 6,000 of them are melanomas, which is a deadly form of skin cancer. And there is also an estimate that a lot of those are related to indoor tanning. So not only do we have the sun in the sky, we have people going to tanning beds. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing that we need to talk about when we talk about sun safety is the sun. Almost 93 million miles from our Earth, can you imagine that that can affect our skin and at some point in our lives could lead to skin cancer if we don't protect our skin? So what we're here today to talk about mostly is protection. Mm -hmm. So when we are thinking of the sun and its rays, what is, what is UV, what are the ultraviolet rays? What does that well, really ultraviolet mean? Ultraviolet rays are invisible, which sounds funny because you can see when it's a sunny day, but even when the sun is obscured by clouds, that ultraviolet, those rays are reaching the earth and they penetrate our skin and can cause damage. So there are three types of ultraviolet rays, UVA, UVB, and UVC. The A rays are the long rays. Those are present year round, regardless of weather. So even on cloudy days, they can penetrate through to our skin. They reflect, they can penetrate through glass and clothing and deep into the surface of our skin. So those are the ones that cause skin damage like wrinkles, leathery skin, sunspots, and believe it or not, cataracts in our eyes. Hmm. So when we're talking about protection, we're not just talking about our skin, but our eyes. If the, um, you know, cataracts are a cloudy film that cause yes. obscured vision, especially during the daytime. The second type of rays are the UVB rays. Those are short rays. And those are the ones that are actually the cause of most skin cancers. UVAs can contribute, but it's the UVBs. UVBs cause the sunburn and therefore the cancer. Any colored skin is damaged skin. So if you have sunburn or tan on your skin, that is skin damage. You've burned your skin. A blistered burn is actually, uh, the way I've heard it said is a blistered burn in childhood can be a predecessor to a skin cancer later in life. Mm -hmm. And I did a poll one time how many people in the room, I was talking to a group of people, how many in this room have never had a sunburn? And regardless of the color of your skin, even very dark skinned people are susceptible to sunburns and skin cancer. And so I asked, you know, has, is there anyone here who's never had a sunburn? And no one could raise their hand. Mm. Then I asked, is there anybody here that doesn't use sunblock? And only one person raised their hand. Mm. So most people are fairly cautious about protecting their skin, but most people aren't 100% cautious about protecting their skin, unfortunately, myself included. Mm -hmm. UVC rays, those are short, high energy, higher energy than the UVAs and Bs, and they're actually filtered out by the ozone layer. So they actually don't reach the surface of the earth and they don't contribute to the skin damage. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about UV protection, we're talking about UVA and UVB. So UVA, obviously, we want to protect because if we sit in the sun, think of somebody who goes to the beach every day for their entire life, and as they get older, their skin looks very kind of leathery, wrinkly, and has lots of spots, you know, mm -hmm. freckles or even some larger dark spots um, along their skin that, you know, can be a predecessor to cancer. Mm -hmm. um, We've all heard on the weather or different places, they're talking about the UV index. What does that really mean? So that is a 
scale that we use in the United States that conforms with international guidelines for UV index reporting by the World Health Organization, the big cheese of who uh -huh. is out there trying to protect people's health <clears throat> and wellness. It's on a scale of one to 11, one being the lowest risk for damage and 11 being the strongest. So the higher the number, the more extreme the intensity of the rays that are potential to reach your skin. So if you watch the news on the morning, this time of year, you know, from about May through probably September, they, it's just some of the little thing that they mention as part of the weather forecast. Mm -hmm. And our UV index today is a whatever number, and they might even say with that report, so remember to wear your sunscreen when you go outdoors. And sunscreen isn't the only way of protecting our skin, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Mm -hmm. But there are also apps that you can have on your phone. I did download the um, a UV index app that um, I believe it's the National Weather Service that put, but there are many of them out mm -hmm. there, most of them free. And if you are concerned about protecting your skin, so before you leave the house for the day, I'm a weather addict, I watch because I wanna know do I need to bring a rain hat, an umbrella, or a, right. you know, a raincoat, warmer clothing. But if you also check for that, you know, are those rays gonna be really strong today? Do I need to gob on some sunscreen before I go out and be out in the sunlight? So where and when are the, is the, um, UV, are the UVAs the strongest? The UV rays? The UV so rays, I'm sorry, the, the strongest. Yeah, obviously the more intense the sun, the more your exposure right. to the rays. And the amount of UV that reaches your skin depends on the time of day. In this area, in the summertime, again, May through August, the sun is the strongest between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And if you're gonna be out in the sun during those times, without any possible for relief in the shade. You really need to wear your sun protection, mm -hmm. you know, clothing or sunscreen or be, you know, bring an, an umbrella or a hat or whatever. So during the day, in the heat of the summer, between 10 and two, obviously the seasons. So in the winter, yes, you can get a sunburn because those rays reflect off of glass, sand, snow, you can be skiing and get a sunburn mm -hmm. because those sun rays are reflecting off the snow and burning your skin, so even in the winter. But the most intensity of rays is between May and August here in this part of the mm -hmm. country. Altitude, um, the air is cleaner and thinner at higher altitudes, so the exposure is greater in mountains than it is in valleys. So if you're gonna go mountain climbing in the middle of the summer when those rays are the strongest, mm you're at higher risk for getting a sunburn than you would be if you were hiking down into a valley. Not that you don't need to protect yourself there as well, but so altitude's another factor. Location, nearer to the equator, the rays are always gonna be the strongest and more extreme. Further toward the poles, the sun is less, less intense. Mm -hmm. And then the time of exposure, how long you're out in the sun, will factor into how likely you are to have your skin damaged or get a sunburn from being outdoors. So mm -hmm. playing outside, uh, going to the beach in the summertime, doing chores out in the yard. I was gardening over the weekend and forgot that my toes were exposed and I could feel that I was getting sunburn on my feet mm. and trying to like sneak them underneath the plant to be in the shade so that mm. I didn't get sunburned toes. So sporting events, anytime when you're going to be outdoors that the sun is high in the sky, especially between May and August, at, you know, between 10 and 2 especially, remember to consider your sun protection. And for those that work outdoors year-round, watching that UV index or having that app on your phone so that you'll know what to expect for, you know, how do I need to protect myself for today from the sun. Although the incidence of sun skin cancer is fairly low per capita, meaning you know, a minuscule number of people per 100,000, for those people that do experience it, it's a very serious diagnosis mm. and you know, can be very deadly. So yeah. you know, we feel like protecting yourself is key to you know, potentially warding off you know, serious Ill illness or death. Now you mentioned that um, when somebody has like a, a tan, that that's also sun damage. Mm -hmm. When people are talking about, well, I just want to get a little bit of color and mm -hmm. then I'll put on my sunblock. Can you, is that safe ever? It, it's really not wise. And although there are certain 
skin types that are more susceptible to developing cancers. Mm -hmm. Anybody, even very dark skinned people are susceptible to sunburn and mm -hmm. skin damage. Anybody can get skin cancer. I actually knew someone who had it on the bottom of their feet. And you don't think of that as a place where the sun reaches, mm -hmm. but people go to the beach and don't think to put that sunblock on the bottom of their feet and, you know, lie on the blanket reading a book and mm -hmm. their bottom of their feet, it's skin, right. it's, it's susceptible. Exposed. So if somebody feels that they have had overexposure and we know that leads to skin cancer, what should they look for? So what they should look for are the ABCDs of skin cancer. A, I'm sorry, I'm going to read it. All right, so we have A is asymmetry. So a mole or a, a lesion larger than the diameter of a pencil. Everybody mm -hmm. knows what a pencil is. Right. Anything larger than the diameter of a pencil, if you look at that spot and draw a line down the center of it, if it's not perfectly round, the, the sides are not equal in size and, and shape, that's asymmetrical, that's one of the ABCDs. The second one is B for borders. The borders are irregular. Instead of nice and smooth, like a nice round coffee cup, mm -hmm. they're you know jagged or bumpy or you know curly cued, just irregular in shape, irregular borders. C is color, a mole or a spot that has more than one color, and it could be you know dark brown, light brown, could be pink, could be red, could be purplish anything that has more than one color that's also asymmetrical and has irregular borders. D is diameter, mm -hmm. so again, bigger than the diameter of a pencil. And E is evolving. Any mole or you know, sunspot or people call them age spots, anything that's changing. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you notice it today and it's smaller than a pencil. You know, the next month you go, gee, that seems it's like it's bigger or changed in shape. So anything that's evolving or was flat to the skin and now is raised. Mm -hmm. those so it's are, important those to examine the, your skin and know what's normal for you and if that is changing exactly. at all. Exactly, so if you do notice, not only on yourself but mm -hmm. on other people, so if you have family members, can't see your own back, so right. if you're out with someone and you notice they have a spot on their back that they hadn't noticed, or just have you had that checked? You know? hmm. So if it meets those criteria, it's, you know, at all the ABCDs. And actually those ABCDs are melanoma, but there are also basal and squamous cell and other skin cancers mm -hmm. um, basically defined as, you know, sores that don't heal or um, you know things that weren't there before, all of a sudden you've, you have this new growth and aren't sure exactly what it is and it's not going away, then have it checked. Mm. In theory, everybody should have their skin examined once a year. You know, if your own doctor doesn't check you over from head to toe, even where the sun doesn't shine, then she, may, she or he may want to send you to a dermatologist to have that annual skin check. Mm -hmm. And people who have had abnormal moles either biopsied or removed, tend to have more regular visits with dermatologists. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a good idea to have it checked at least yearly. Now, I know we're talking about the detrimental effects of uh, sun. What about vitamin D? So yes, vitamin D does help us. We, we do absorb some vitamin D via sunlight, mm -hmm. but that is not the only way to get vitamin D. And it is a myth. People are afraid that if they use sunscreen or sunblock and they're not getting that vitamin D through their skin that they're going to be deficient. And actually, foods and supplements are an excellent way to get the FDA of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So, you know, check with your doctors or you can even go to CVS and read, you know, look at the look online for the RDA of vitamin D. Mm -hmm and be sure that you're getting that. If you're not eating foods that contain it, you may need to take a supplement, and your doctor can advise you on I what have, strength that I, you need I've to take. I've heard people say that before, that, oh, well, I just am gonna go out and be exposed for 15 or 20 minutes so that I can get my vitamin D mm -hmm. from the sun, and then I'll go apply sunblock. Can you tell us how sunblock work? How, how does sunblock uh, block out the UV rays? Okay, there's two types, um, titanium and 
titanium dioxide and zinc oxide actually do physically block. You apply a coating of it, and the sun cannot penetrate that and get to your skin. Mm -hmm. The other types, I won't name the chemicals that are in them, but those need to be applied before going out into the sun by 30 minutes. So if you know that you're going to go out and you're going to the beach, put your sunblock on before you leave the house at least 30 minutes before you're going to be outdoors in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. And that gives those products the opportunity to be absorbed through your skin and create the barrier so those ultraviolet rays cannot penetrate your skin and cause mm. burning. Um, the other way that we need to use sunblock is to reapply. So if you read the label on your product, that's first and foremost, read the label and do what the manufacturer of it recommends. If they say put it on 30 minutes in advance, put it on 30 minutes in advance. If they say to put it on every two hours, put it on every two hours. I did hear from a dermatology nurse that not applying it every two hours, so not reapplying it, is actually more detrimental than not wearing it at all. Hmm. And I don't want anyone to mistake that for, oh, then I shouldn't bother to wear it, not at all. Definitely wear it, but try to remember to reapply it every hmm. two hours because it will, its effectiveness wanes. And you also want to reapply it after you've been in the water. Hmm. And it doesn't matter how long you're in the water. If you're in the water for five minutes and you come back out and you had just put it on a half an hour before you went in the water, reapply it anyways because a good amount of it is going to wash off. And of they do skin. have those sport sunscreens mm -hmm. so that sometimes I think you have that false sense of, oh, well, it's the sport kind so I can sweat yeah. and be in the water and do things right. and not really have yeah, to worry about it. Yeah, they call them sweat proof and waterproof, but, but, it's but not, the truth is you really should not reapply really. even with those, yeah, when you... So when you're picking your sunscreen and mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out about SPF, mm -hmm. what, how do you, what's the safe level? I've heard a couple of different things uh -huh. about that. You yeah. know, like some of them are, have like 70 and that's more than you could possibly need. Or, so well, can you talk you know, about that a little bit? It depends on the person. I, and I think that someone who's being followed for skin cancer or, you know, maybe has skin cancer in their family would be a little more likely to choose a higher number. But even if it's a higher number, that doesn't mean you don't need to reapply. So SPF 15, for example, mm -hmm. so the, the recommendation is that you not use less than 15. Mm -hmm. So if you have an SPF 4, it's really not going to do a whole lot for blocking those rays from mm. penetrating your skin. So SPF 15 means that 1 15th of the burning radiation will reach the skin if the sunscreen is applied correctly. Mm. So if you multiply up and say I'm using an SPF 30, then only one thirtieth of the rays can penetrate my skin. But they've also calculated out a, a number of minutes that it's effective for. So, for example, if a person develops sunburn in 10 minutes when they're not wearing sunscreen, then with the same intensity of sunlight, wearing SPF 15 properly, they could avoid a sunburn for 150 minutes. But again, that doesn't mean if you used an SPF 100 and you went out in the sun, you're not okay to be out there for a thousand minutes. Mm. You still need to reapply after two yeah. hours. Yeah. I don't know all of the, the science behind why that mm -hmm. was determined, but pay heed and reapply. Mm. So that's the rules. The other thing about how mm. to apply it is that the average adult should be using the amount, the size of a golf ball to protect all of their exposed skin. Mm -hmm. So if you're just putting a little dab here and a little dab there, it's not enough. You really need to put a layer of it on your skin and you mm. can rub that in. But if you're not in total using about the amount, you know, it, you're not going to pour it out all at once, I'm sure. But if you put out a whole amount the size of a golf ball on your hand, it's going to take you a while to get all of your skin coated. But that's really what you need to do. And they do recommend that you put it where the skin is exposed, but I like to, before putting the bathing suit on, also protect, because you know, if you're wearing your you know, bathing suit strap can strap move, slip, right. you'd have that little tiny strip, whereas you're swimming and that's moving, mm -hmm. you can get burned. Mm -hmm. So you know, cover the areas where the, the clothing is likely to move. All right, does sunscreen have an expiration date? I know everything has expiration dates now, mm -hmm. and I've heard different things yep. about 
when to throw it out, when to right, save it. Right, exactly. So they do have an expiration date. And if there's any question about whether it would still be good to use, my recommendation is that you call the manufacturer. Most products now have an 800 number on there. Mm -hmm. Most of the 800 numbers for companies are available during the week, you know, during business hours. Right. But it's certainly worth, if you're planning a trip on the, to the beach on Saturday and you think, oh, I have sunblock, find it, you know, and take a look at it before you start to pack your car on Saturday morning and realize we never... We never checked it, and it's now two years expired. Yeah. So it does lose its effectiveness if mm -hmm. it sits for a period of time. So again, the manufacturer could guide you. If it's one day past date, would it still be good to use? I'd call them and yeah. ask them yeah. that. But a good rule of thumb would be to, you know, each year purchase a new vat of sunscreen yeah. to <laughs> bring with you to uh, for your family for all your outings. So what other ways other than sunscreen could we? protect our skin from UV rays. Yep, our skin and our eyes and as our well. Eyes so and our eyes. the basic sunburn slash skin damage and prevention our tips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you can you know you I have my hair part. I've gotten them yep. in my I've gotten burns in my yep, part you before. You get burns in your part, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And whoever thinks to put sunblock there mm. we don't. And then you'll have a significant sunburn right on the top of your head. Which, you know, were you ever to develop skin cancer, do you think you'd notice it? Because maybe you don't part your hair in the same place every right, time. Right. So that's why going to a dermatologist, that skin check is worth doing because they'll check every inch of you. Mm -hmm. So stay in the shade if it's possible, especially during those high intensity hours between 10 and 2 here in the summertime. Um, a lot of the beach chairs that they sell now come with the little receptacle for holding a beach umbrella, mm -hmm. but there are also, you know, little portable gazebos that, so if you were having a cookout in your yard and you don't have a whole lot of shade underneath trees, you could set up some of those little gazebo awnings. type of, yeah, yeah awnings, mm -hmm. um, cover up, protect your, to protect your exposed skin. Wear a hat that has a wide brim to protect your face, your head, your ears, another place where people burn, and your neck. And just Something worth mentioning, I noticed that in some of the pharmacies this year, there are clothing, like hats with SPF in them. They mm. do have clothing that is treated, I believe they treat it with titanium dioxide, and it's good for, maybe it's a thousand washings, I'm sure the manufacturer's label will tell mm -hmm. you how long it's good for. But there are, there are whole lines of clothing, you know, shirts, pants, hats, that are treated for sun protection. Mm. So that would increase, you know, the value. So if you've not only got your sunblock to protect your exposed skin, but you've got the hat or the shirt that's infused with this uh, skin um, sunblock, mm -hmm. then you know you're much less at risk for skin damage. Wear sunglasses, the ones that wrap around and block as close to 100% of UVA and UVB rays, and that is what to look for if you're buying a pair of sunglasses read the tag if it says either broad spectrum or protects from both UVA and UVB mm. then it's safe to assume that they will they'll protect your eyes from sun damage again wear your sunscreen UP uh, SPF 15 or higher and avoid those tanning beds and sun lamps mm. those UV rays are just as dangerous as the burning rays of the sun mm -hmm. and there is a fallacy you know well if I go to a facility, it's an enclosed, it's controlled, it's still ultraviolet light, it still penetrates your skin, causes sunburn, mm -hmm. causes sun skin damage mm. after you know repeated use. Okay. So there's that. Well, this has been very informative. Did you have anything else that you wanted to tell us about this or I think we I think you've answered a lot of questions yeah. for me. I know that I will be ready to go to the beach. I'm actually going on vacation soon, and what I'll usually do, because uh, it is greasy, is I, I put the sunblock on before I go to the beach, but it's a five minute walk to the beach, and so mm -hmm. I haven't really given it time to absorb into my skin. Correct. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's, this has been very so informative, very helpful, thank you. Oh, good, I'm glad that you'll change that just based yeah, on this information. Yeah, I will, That's thank you. I hope that and other people share that with will. my kids and grand, you know, so they mm -hmm. treat my grandchildren with, you know, apply it correctly. And yep. And I, I will add this one thing. I did attend a, a um, nursing in-service about melanoma, which got me to thinking about how 
our general public is mm. treating their skin and not being sun safe. And one of the take home messages from them, I know I've said it already, but tanning beds, that the incidence of skin cancer in young women has increased and it is because they, so you know, I know that it was a common thing. We're going to a prom, we wanted to have a little color to look nice in our dress, mm. but what they're doing is they're causing skin damage that can lead to melanoma, which is deadly. So my take home mm. message is your dress will look beautiful even without the tan. Right. Don't, don't go to the tanning beds. I, I went to a dermatologist once and they had a poster. It said, if you had a sunburn, it's not if you'll get cancer, it's when you'll get cancer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm. Mm. Yeah, it's a scary thought. It is scary. It scary is scary. Thought. So thank you so much. It was my As pleasure. always, it's a pleasure to have Maureen with Health Beat, and thanks for joining us on Your Senior Center.